Good morning. It's Wednesday, August 24th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. And our devotion this morning is entitled, Between Pinnacle and Pit. This is the last part of a five-part series. And our scripture is Hebrews chapter 12. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Note, what follows are excerpts of the first sermon I ever preached, June the 7th, 1978. If you've worked with gold or know something about gold, you know it begins as ore dug right out of the earth. Then it has to be washed. When gold is in ore form, combined with all that dirt and other elements, it's not usable. When the gold is washed, separated from the other impurities, it's still not fit for use. A gold nugget is no good, it's only mostly pure, but still needing preparation for usability. The final process is the fire. Gold is melted down to remove any other elements that might hamper its most productive state. That's the way a lot of Christians are. We make a decision for Christ, and we're only a raw possibility at that point. We're washed by the blood of Christ, much like the ore that's been washed, quite pure. We're washed by the blood and forgiven, but still not ready for his best use, not unless we yield to the fire. The prophet Isaiah said, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Of course, Isaiah wasn't talking about the gold or silver you dig out of the ground. He was talking about the gold of your life's possibilities that have been yielded to the fire, refined and molded into something ready to be used. Job understood this. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Elizabeth and I have been praying for her mother and father. This morning, my mother-in-law is in a hospital room in Port Ritchie. This was 1978. She had two heart attacks this week, not just one. She had one that put her in the hospital, and she wouldn't give up. She had another. That's two strikes. I will tell you something. We have been praying for her for a long time for her salvation and her husband's. Updating to five years later in 1983, Elizabeth's mom died this year. After she was gone, we were going through her belongings and found the answer to our prayers. It was her Bible given to her by a visiting pastor not long before she died. On the flyleaf was written in her hand and dated shortly before she died, this inscription, Sophie saved. The Holy Spirit tugs at a heart gently, ever so gently. The Holy Spirit deals gently with us until we come to a point. How hard the Holy Spirit tugs at your heart is up to you. Repentance, turning from sin, is the only thing that interrupts the consequences of our sin from something drastic being done to get our attention. When you have people praying for you that you'll turn to the Lord, but you keep turning away, you're going to benefit from God's chastisement. Well, we know what chastisement is, and we know why. It's a purging, a cleansing. Now, how do we benefit from it? Paul's letter to the Roman believers tells us, Romans 8:28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Our life is like the gold dug out of the ground, raw possibility, but still needing the discipline of shaping for God's good uses. It needs to be yielded to the fire of God's purifying character, making us fit for his purposes. For you today, chastisement, the move of God to discipline, teach, correct, and mature his children, comes in many forms. Sometimes it's experiencing problems, sometimes sickness, sometimes financial difficulties, and a myriad of other roads that we may walk. One thing is always common to chastisement. The experience gets our attention. 
This is God's blessed way of training his loved ones into a peaceful harvest of right living. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.